Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Moss Norman, and in today's video, we are gonna be wrapping up our series on test automation with JUnit 5. In the last video, I showed you how to publish test execution data to an InfluxDB database. And in this video, I'm gonna walk you through setting up a Grafana dashboard that will query that InfluxDB database and display some important test execution metrics. We're only gonna add a couple of important metrics to the dashboard, and then I'll let you expand upon it if you wanna track additional metrics. And I expect that this video will give you the knowledge to do so. So with that, let's jump right in. So if you don't have Grafana up already, go ahead and pull up Grafana, and once you're there, uh, navigate over to the uh, tile menu here and select uh, manage under the dashboards menu. And from the dashboards menu, we're going to select a new dashboard. And next, I'm going to add uh, a new panel. And uh, in the panel screen, I'm going to select the data source that I want to query. And uh, right now, it's selected as Prometheus, but I'm going to change that and I'm gonna select the data source that we added in the previous video, which was named JUnit-test-data. And you'll notice that once I select the uh, InfluxDB data source, uh, the query window updates, and I have these uh, drop-down menus that I can uh, form a InfluxDB query with. Now, rather than using the drop-downs, I can also uh, select this pencil here and move into text uh, edit mode. And this allows me to just directly enter a query. Maybe if I found a query uh, from the internet, I can just copy and paste in uh, in this mode. But we'll use the uh, uh, the drop down selections to form our query. And the first metric that I want to track is test execution duration. I want to know how long does each test method take to complete. And this is a really important metric to track because you want to make sure that uh, you know, your CI CD pipeline is giving your developers quick feedback. And if you have test methods that are taking, you know, a significant amount of time to complete, then they're not getting the feedback that they need uh, quickly to, um, to move through their, their feature work. And test duration for a test method is provided in our Influx DB database. So in order to get that, uh, that value over time, um, the first thing that we'll do is select a measurement and from the measurements dropdown, I'm going to select JUnit underscore data. I'm going to remove the mean function here. And then in the field function, I'm going to select a value, and I want the value to be test duration. In the group by section, I'm going to remove the time function here, and I'm actually going to group the duration by the test name. So I'm going to add a tag here and then tag test underscore name. And once I select group by tag test underscore name, I get a breakdown on the graph that shows me for each test method, the duration of a given execution of that test method. So if I look at um, one of the executions here, I can see that uh, test model took uh, about 0.04 seconds to complete. So most of the time, it looks like these uh, test methods execute in under a second. So I'm just going to zoom in on this data here so we kind of fill up the panel. And one thing that I notice in the legend is that the legend is kind of cluttered a little bit. I really only, I only care about the name of the test method in the legend. So I, I really only want just the test name to show up in the legend. Right now, I'm getting a lot of extra... Um, a lot of extra text in the legend. So to uh, pull that out, I can add an alias on the tag and I can just reference the, uh, the test name tag by putting dollar sign tag and then test underscore name. And you'll notice that after entering that, the legend updates and I see just the name of the test method. So it looks, the legend looks a lot cleaner and I can select uh, which, you know, uh, which tests I wanna see the duration for over time. The last step here is just to give the panel a name and I'm gonna call it test, uh, test execution duration. 
and I'm gonna click apply. So now that we have that panel, let's add another one and I'm gonna bring it over here to the right. I'm gonna click add new panel. The first thing that I'm gonna do is uh, select the data source and we're gonna select JUnit hyphen uh, test uh, hyphen data. And in this metric, we're going to track the test status. So we're gonna track the, the status of each test over time, whether it passed or failed. So in this particular panel, we'll have two queries actually. We'll have one query querying um, uh, test status where the test passed, and then another query um, pulling data where the tests failed. Let's query passing tests first. So I'm gonna go down uh, here to the query window. I'm gonna select measurement and it's gonna be uh, JUnit underscore data. And then the where clause, I'm gonna say where the test status is equal to passed. And in the select clause, I'm going to uh, remove the mean function here. I'm gonna select test status, and then we're going to add an aggregation and we'll select the count function. So now we get a count of passing tests. Um, but the time interval is a little weird here. So I would like to make the time interval um, a little bit larger. I'm gonna make it, let's make it five minutes. So that smooths out the data a little bit and makes it a little bit uh, easier to read. In addition to that, we're also gonna group this by the test name. So we want the legend to show the test name, uh, what test, what specific test passed. So I'm gonna add a group by um, function here and I'm gonna select tag test name. And now we get a breakdown in legend per test method, the successes of that test method over time. And for the alias, I'm gonna do the same thing that we did in the previous panel. I'm gonna add a dollar sign tag and then underscore test, underscore name. And then I'm also gonna add um, hyphen uh, past so that we can differentiate between the two queries. We're about to create another query uh, querying failed uh, test methods over time. Okay, so now we get a cleaned up legend and it shows uh, test make where it passed and test model where it pass. And now let's make a, a new query where we query uh, uh, failed test methods. An easy way to do this since the query is so close to uh, this first uh, query is to go up here where we can actually duplicate this query, this little button right here. I'm gonna click that and now I have uh, a second duplicate query. And the only thing that I'm gonna change here is the, uh, the test status value. I'm gonna select failed and I'm going to update the alias to say uh, failed. Okay, so now we get one additional. So there was only one additional uh, test in this case that was failing and we, get, we see that those uh, instances where this test method failed on the panel now. Now you'll notice that when I selected the dropdown for the test status value, um, there are more statuses that uh, a test method can be in when it's uh, executed, um, but you'll you can see here that it's it starts to get a little cluttered. I mean, we only have two uh, two test methods in this case, and the panel already is looking uh, maybe a little uh, a little cluttered. So it's best to unless there's a direct relationship between the two st the statuses that you want to query in a single panel it's probably best to separate out into a different panel each status of, of uh, your test because it's very likely that you'll have you know, more than, than two test methods. You'll probably have multiple test suites. So I'm gonna leave this panel as it is. I'm just gonna update the title here and uh, I'm gonna say test status and then pass slash fail. And let's uh, hit apply. And as I mentioned, uh, since we don't wanna clutter up a single panel, let's add a, a dedicated panel just for regression. So I'm gonna click add a new panel. I'll bring it down to the bottom here. I'll select the data source. The measurement will be the same. And then the where clause will select the test status. And then we're going to query uh, just regressions where test methods uh, regressed. So I'm going to remove the mean. 
I'm going to select test status, then I'll select the aggregations and the count function. I'll set the interval to uh, over a five minute period. And then we're going to organize, organize this uh, by the test name. Okay, so we only see one test in this case that has regressed at all over time. And I'll update the, uh, the alias as well. So tag underscore test underscore name. Okay, and then we'll call the panel uh, regressions. And let's uh, hit apply. I think that's, that's all we need there. Yep. And lastly, let's just make one more panel. Uh, and this will be a table, it won't be a graph um, like, uh, uh, like these other three panels. I'm gonna bring it down here to the corner and I'm gonna select the uh, data source as JUnit. And I'm gonna format uh, this query as not a time series, but as a table. And we'll query um, the status of tests uh, but in a table format. So we'll be able to see kind of like a list of, uh, of the status of each test when it executed. And in addition to the format as a table, I'm also going to select the visualization as a table. And then from the measurement, we'll select uh, the JUnit underscore data. And from the select uh, clause, we'll remove the mean. And for the field value, we'll set it as test underscore uh, status. And I'm going to remove the time function here. And I'm going to group by the, uh, the test names. Okay. And let's just uh, call this uh, test status table. And I'm going to hit apply. So that's all the panels that I'm going to add for this uh, particular dashboard. Let's go ahead and save it. I'm just going to call it a JUnit uh, 5 test reports. And I'm going to click Save. Now, although I've only added these four metrics to the dashboard, that's not to say that there uh, isn't other metrics that you might want to track in this dashboard as well. I hope you enjoyed this series on test automation with JUnit 5, and I hope you learned a lot. And if you did enjoy it, please consider throwing a like on the video and subscribing to the channel for more series like this. Thanks for watching.